Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know it was uh, stormy a little bit here, uh, but this is our winter for those who are coming uh, from abroad. It lasts for a couple of hours, that's it. And now we're uh, in a sunny day again, as it should be. Um, I was thinking really how to open this uh, session, and those who are familiar with this uh, conference, it's actually started uh, originally as an OpenStack event, uh, which was all about open source cloud. So I wanted to have something that kind of plugs into that, and today we're actually launching the first Cloud Native Day. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about how it's related and uh, what is actually open source in the, in the cloud world. And I started with this, and, and I wanted to stop here for a second and ask the people here in the room, what in your view I'm gonna talk about uh, with this Amazon effect? What is Amazon effect? Anyone have an idea? Wanna throw an idea? What's that? Alternative to cloud. That's basically how OpenStack started. No? Any other uh, attempt? Of the Amazon effect? Okay, so actually 2018 was a very interesting year in open source world. And I didn't have to work out to, uh, to actually put that slide. Uh, originally, I actually, in, in, even this year, I had a lot of discussion with investors, and I think you'll hear it also uh, in this conference. Is open source business model really you know, uh, something that you could build on? Uh, can you actually build up a successful open source? And I uh, think I've missed a couple of other names here. Uh, there are many. Uh, we have JFrog here as well, and many other companies. So I think it's... Uh, those numbers really speaks for itself. And why did I relate that to, why did I make the connection between the Amazon effect and that? I think what Amazon did actually affected the entire industry in many areas. One of them is the fact that there are, or there is, a fear of getting locked into Amazon. There is the dominancy of Amazon that is actually taking place in every part of our industry, almost, including grocery and who knows where. That's really a classic case in which we're seeing the community starting to try to balance itself in a way. That's why we're starting to see open source becoming a vehicle for those who are not Amazon as a way to address the Amazon threat in this case uh, uh, from that perspective. But what is, it, what is actually open source and what does it mean for the industry? Some would see open source as a, as a, as a way to get free code or free application. Obviously, that's not the case. And you can see the numbers here. That's not free software companies that, were, that got uh, this amount of money. So the question is, what is the meaning of doing open source in this type of world? And I was thinking about it even this morning. I was kayaking here, somewhere here in the, in the uh, sea. And I realized that there is one way to describe it. It's really changing the relationship between a vendor and the consumer. You could think about open source in a lot of romantic way, but it's really changing the relationship. Rather than having a vendor to consumer relationship that is, uh, you know, uh, the vendor does something, sell you something, and you buy it, and you basically depend on him once you buy it, it's really creating a partnership relationship where you use something that you could actually control and you could choose other vendors to, to actually provide you that same thing, but you have a way to also contribute. It's not a way to commoditize the market. It's not a way to provide free open source because you need the vendor to stand behind that, and the vendor needs to put money to actually maintain that software, and someone needs to pay for that, so there is no free meal, so to speak. And what we're seeing is that the, all the companies that were not open source, that were making money out of anything else than open source, are now embracing open source in big numbers. And it all happens this year, actually the last part of this year, and the last one has been IBM with Red Hat, Microsoft with GitHub. Uh, Salesforce kind of, uh, I think we're already somewhere there. Now there is almost the opposite direction as well. Uh, those who are f following the uh, uh, the recent announcement from other open source companies. In terms of the relationship, what you need to be aware of is that when, when we're actually dealing with open source, those open source companies make their money out of selling services, support, 
And what happened in the cloud world is the relationship was kind of awkward and not healthy. Companies like Amazon took open source companies and just used them and sold them without contributing back. That's really considered an anti-open source climate or an anti-open source kind of relationship. You don't want to create that type of relationship. If you remember what I said at the beginning, we, open source is really about creating a relationship of partnership. This is the exact opposite of it. It's really abusing open source. And in a way, it's actually hurting other people that are using open source because now uh, those open source companies that actually live from selling those products have to be threatened by others selling their, their own product that they invested in developing by companies that are not even contributing back to those open source projects. So we want to change that, and, and I'll kind of connect that to what we're trying to do here in this conference. So Cloud Native, in my view, is a, is a reaction to a lot of that. And what we're seeing is, a, is an alternative path in which uh, we're starting to see an open source movement that is actually taking control over how we run application in the cloud. And instead of cloud vendors taking open source and selling it for us, we're actually seeing open source uh, in a way standardizing or commoditizing the cloud. And if you think about all Kubernetes, Docker, it really the first thing that enables us to work with Amazon and Microsoft and Google pretty much in the same way. And we have a way to control it. We're not dependent just on those vendors to actually control how applications are running or working. And there is a huge framework behind it now that we can use and contribute to and change that relationship to a more healthy relationship. Rather than having a monopoly relationship, where three vendors controlling everything that we do in their own proprietary way, we have back control how to uh, build something that is more partnership relationship. And again, it's not about creating a free market or free uh, solution. It's really about creating a healthier relationship between consumers and vendors, if you think about it. And that ecosystem has grown over the past few years quite substantially. As you can see here, there's many logos here, Cloudified included. And uh, uh, if you see, it covers pretty much everything in the infrastructure, the application framework, monitoring, logging, and now uh, we're starting to see also networking becoming a big piece of that kind of world. Uh, networking is actually going through a big shift towards uh, being software-driven, being software-defined, and so forth. And what we're actually trying to do here in this kind of event, and again, this is the first event that we're doing in this, uh, in this kind of uh, realm, is really provide a platform for community here in Israel that I think has been innovative uh, also with OpenStack, when OpenStack started, uh, to really contribute back and first of all learn what's going on in this world. Now you can build a more healthy relationship with a cloud vendor through open source. What is there? What is available? What others are doing? And that's the classic place where event can actually help. And even in the first event, uh, we got, I think, a, a good amount of uh, speaking and a good amount of talks that we'll uh, describe in a second. And I think we'll walk you through some of the things that is already available in the industry. And again, the main thing in this event is really to mingle and talk to one another and learn what others are doing, not just learn from the, uh, the session themselves. And that's really the goal of this event. And that's what uh, kind of strive us to, to push that forward and create it and put the energy uh, to build it. And at this point, I wanted to really thank, uh, first of all, the sponsors that are behind us. Again, even doing this type of uh, event requires someone to contribute. And sponsors is a classic case in which we can get those contributions uh, and actually fund this and allow you to actually drink your coffee, eat your lunch, and come here and listen to all the, uh, the nice talks. And obviously, I uh, wanted to say thank you for Abner and uh, Cloudify team here is also here, uh, and Jeremy specifically. Where is Jeremy? He's been uh, putting a lot of effort uh, to actually run a lot of the uh, logistics here. Sharon is actually uh, somewhere in a lot right now. <laughs> so she's having fun while we uh, need to. Uh, listen to all those talks. 
And at this point, I wanted to thank all the other uh, people behind the events. Raise your hand. Where is Arthur? Good. Come to stage. Jeremy. Edin is here? Where is Gal? So we got a partial list here, a ways of now. Somewhere. So those people have put a lot of effort to actually create this event on their free time. Uh, they didn't really got uh, any, anything from it other than the fact that it's important for them and they're very, very passionate about uh, what they've created here with the speakers, all the talks that you see here, all the logistics that you see here. So big applause to, uh, to the guys.